Hi, this is part three of our Newtone IS69 entry door station refinishing series. As you can see, I've been to the paint shop. This is our bead blasted IS69 front door speaker frame. And this will be the example one that I'll be working with. Not today quite yet, but next week. I went down last week to our local automotive paint supply business. They come highly recommended. They've been in the automotive paint supply business since the mid 1970s and they are in this area the go-to business for this kind of help and equipment and information. I bought the first go around of things that I need to be able to prime our IS69 door frame. So what do we have here? Well the most important thing the first thing was the spray gun and after talking with them and I took the IS-69 with me and I explained what we were doing and after they got done with the puzzled look on their face they said we know just what you need and they recommended this this is an air gun un gunso gunso I think this is a model AZ3 this is a high efficiency it's a high volume low pressure spray gun they said it was definitely the way to go for what I was doing and it looks just like most spray guns that I've ever seen anybody use work. Pull the trigger, air and paint come out and you spray with it. I, and no, I know you're not supposed to go like this. You go like this and all that kind of stuff. So we have the spray gun. It's a gravity feed. It has the container that goes on the top where you put the primer or the paint. While I was there, I bought these. In, these are inline moisture capture devices to make sure we have moisture capture equipment on our shop compressor anyway. But the fellow said this is just for good measure because the last thing you want when you're spraying something is you don't want a drop of water on anything. And they were inexpensive. So I got those. He was nice enough, of course, to give me a whole pile of stir sticks for free. That was good. We've got tack cloths because cleanliness counts. Cleanliness is important. We have these plastic mixing containers that have all of the different proportional measurements on the outside and he explained how you use these to get the mix of primer and activator and thinner in the right proportions. Of course we have to strain our primer or paint so we have these disposable strainers. And then we have the most important part. We had a long discussion about the type of primer we should use for the Zymac casting. Zymac is not a material that's used in the automotive world very much it seems. So he made some calls to a couple different manufacturers and the consensus was that a good quality epoxy primer would be the way to go. So this is our can of DP50LV epoxy primer in gray. And this is very heavy. A lot of solids in this, it seems. This is our second part. This is our epoxy hardener, which gets mixed into it. And this is a medium compliant thinner. And this is to thin it out. It also can be used for general purpose cleaning of the casting and things like that before you spray it. This is the mix here. And this is actually relatively expensive. I was somewhat surprised when I reviewed the invoice before I paid that the quart can of primer was almost $85. Now this will probably paint 500 castings because we only need a little bit of paint to paint a casting with but even so. So you've got 85 for this, you've got 55 for the hardener and you've got almost $40 for the quart can of medium compliant thinner. So not inexpensive material wise, a lot different than going down to your local home improvement store and buying a quart can of paint thinner. But this is all professional quality stuff and he assures me that this will do an excellent job for what we're doing. Unless of course it doesn't. And he'll know, he said you'll know two days after you prime it because what you do is you take it after it's been primed and dried for two days and you go like this with your finger and if it flakes off it's the wrong kind of primer. So there's a little bit of best guess on this because 
like I said, they don't use Zymat casting in automotive, so the automotive paint guys, they weren't exactly sure, but they were reasonably sure because this stuff apparently will stick to just about anything. So it has a long list of things that it can stick to, so we're probably good with that. That's where we are with this, this right now. This coming week will be practice time. With our, new with our new toys, with our spray gun and so forth. I have obtained a great number of pieces of just general sheet metal and stuff that I can use as practice to get used to using the spray gun and see how it feels and those sort of things. I don't know if there'll be a video showing me do that because I don't wanna get paint on the camcorder. I don't know, we'll see how that goes in the end. But there'll be more videos about our refinishing project as we move forward now, we have lots of the details about doing this underway, and it seems to be coming along well, so there'll be more updates shortly. I hope you found this interesting, and perhaps it'll be helpful. If it is, and it does, give it a thumbs up on YouTube, because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and click on the bell to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.